Hey queens, and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be sewing McCall's 8036, otherwise known as the Sasha dress. Getting right into it, I'm going to be doing a tissue fit first. I'm using a size 12, which is my normal size. I'm never really bothered to make a muslin, so I'll usually do a tissue fit instead if I'm concerned about the particular pattern. I find the adjustments I have to make are normally pretty common, pattern to pattern. Today I'll have to lift the waist ever so slightly and also do a sway back adjustment. These are the two most common adjustments I have to make when sewing a big fall pattern. I'm also checking where the shoulder falls. I'm a bit worried that the sleeves might end up sitting off my shoulder, but it looks close enough for now so I'll figure it out once I've got the thing together. I'm going to go right ahead and start making those adjustments on my pattern paper. Again, I'm not too concerned with preserving my pattern. I can't justify the amount of time it would take to trace, cut, and then make such minor adjustments to a pattern piece. I took the waist up an eighth of an inch and made a sway back adjustment of about a quarter of an inch in the center back. After cutting the fabric pieces, I'm now marking the important points. This pattern has quite a few pleats, so it took a while to chalk up all my tailor's tacks, making clear sewing lines for all the pleats and darts. I'm going a bit out of order here, pinning and sewing the side seams of the skirt. Uh... And now time for yet more pinning. Facing to facing, shoulders to shoulders, side bodice to side bodice. Now the markings have been made, I've pinned and sewed them in place. And now for the painstaking task of sewing in the ends. I didn't backstitch at the end of the pleats to avoid puckering, to get that smoother, more professional look, similar to sewing in the ends on darts. The pattern does call for the pleats to be top stitched, but I was using cheap thread and I wanted a clean finish, so no top stitching for me. I'm actually super impressed with how the sleeve pleats turned out. I'm not super into gathering in general. I'm a clean lines type of gal, so this is giving me the right type of feels. Before attaching the bodice to the skirt, I'm going to go ahead and overlook the raw edges on what I've sewn up so far. So I've pressed open all my seams and it's actually looking pretty good so far. I'm now going to pin the bodice to the skirt, sleeves to sleeves, and sleeves to sleeve cuff. While I'm at it, I'm also going to hand stitch the sleeve cuff in place. I believe this pattern is part of the Spring 2020 McCall's collection. It has the new branding which I have feelings about. I don't mind the font change, but I think it's trying a little bit too hard. And I really don't need the dresses to have all these girly names. When I'm at the shop, I search by pattern number, not by name. I'm also concerned how long the names thing will last before we get into super abstract territory before being ditched altogether. 
I was drawn to this pattern purely for the button down twist on a wrap dress. I don't care much for the frilly versions, but I love the big sleeves and the somewhat modest yet modern look. The pattern pictures on the front can normally look a bit frumpy on the models as they're not specifically made for them, or at least that's how it looks, which is not good. But as far as the picture on the front of this pattern goes, it's actually not bad. It looks ever so slightly boxy on the model, however, it looks like it's almost done on purpose. Now it's time for the last major movement, which is to insert the sleeves. I've done my basting stitch and pulling tight where I need to ease the sleeves in place. So here's the spread of how it's looking so far. It's actually taking really good shape and I'm really in love with the sleeves. And now on to buttons. It's a personal choice, but I transfer my button markings once I've sewn up the garment. I find that there is less room for error once everything is in place and I'm not gonna lose the markings along the way. I found the instructions for the buttons to be really weird. So the pattern tissue came with buttonhole markings, but no markings for the button placement. The instructions say, Make buttonholes in right front at markings. Lap right front over left. Matching centers. Using buttonholes as guide, make button markings in left front. Sew buttons at markings. I followed this and it turned out pretty well. Just thought it was a bit weird. It does make sense, but also wouldn't the buttons always end up in the same place if you're lining center to center? Oh well, it seemed to have turned out fine for me. But hopefully this helps if you make it and you think you're missing a piece altogether. You're not. Okay, so with everything but the hem complete, I'm going to do a fit test and just see how we're going. You can see that the sleeve seams are sitting ever so slightly off the shoulder. It's not supposed to do that. So I'll have to fix that. I also really liked the length and since there's not much bias to the skirt, I'm not gonna worry about hanging it overnight. Now to fix the sleeves. Now to do this properly, I probably should have taken the sleeve out, taken fabric off the shoulder and reattached the sleeve altogether but I really didn't care to go to all that effort. So I just went over the upper part of the sleeve seam again at a 2.5 centimeter seam allowance. Now for a quick hem. I'm marking two inches above the raw edge. So when folded up, I'll have a one inch hem to the ironing board and then straight to a blind hem stitch. Going beyond the pattern, I added this extra loop and button inside the dress to hold the waistline in place. As there was quite a bit of overlap in the fabric and it wasn't being supported internally. And that's it. That's how easy it was to make McCall's 8036 or the Sasha dress. I am super pleased with how this dress turned out. It gives off a modern yet modest look. It's easy breezy Byron Bay while still being super put together. Previously, I probably would only wear this piece as a casual Friday look to work, but in a post COVID world, I think we're all impressed when someone rocks up in more than just pajamas. So I think I've actually got a useful outfit here. It took me about four days to make this dress around work and life admin. And I will easily say the hardest part of making this dress was finding the fabric. 
In future, I'll also pick some contrasting buttons, which I think will help turn up the volume. But I'm still happy with what I've made, even though it's a bit muted. But that's also its charm. Thanks for watching everyone. Let me know how you think the dress turned out. Let me know if you've made this pattern and what you thought. Remember to like, share and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and want to see more. I'm trying to upload it once a week, but we'll see how that goes. Until next time. Bye.